for the past few years, I've been working at the Union Gospel Mission as a maintenance coordinator. And one morning, that was at room 10 at the shelter. So they take me to room 10 and let us in, and there's a lady there, and she's sitting in a chair. She didn't move. The look never changed. The position never changed. The stare never changed. And she just proceeded to stare at that same spot at the wall. And uh, at that point, it starts kind of sinking in that something might be wrong. Lisa has always been a sensitive person. And I think that in order to deal with life, she became stubborn and resistant. But she got married, and then she had her children. You know, she had a very difficult time being a mom. Uh, she didn't let anybody close. And she ended up going through a divorce. And slowly, she started going downhill. By the time I was in junior high, things really fell apart. So I was about 13 years old. And it was tough just to be around her. She was always just angry and sad and would just yell all the time. She'd be OK at one time. And then it was something would kind of flip a switch, and then she'd kind of turn into kind of like a monster type thing. It was really difficult to watch her, her sadness, her anger, her rage, her eyes. It was like I was just kind of talking to the wall almost, like just kind of blank stare. Like it was just, it was, it was weird. It was odd. It was almost like it wasn't her anymore. And that just seemed to balloon and get worse and get worse to the point that she was just like a time bomb ready to go off. I had given up a lot of hope in thinking that my mom was going to change. You would talk to her, but she was never there. It was like there was empty up here. It seemed like there was no hope for her at all at some points. It just seemed like this was just going to be my life. Why was this happening to me? Why was it happening to my brother? Why was my mom angry all the time? And there were times when I'd ask, is it ever going to change? Because I didn't know. The doctors were not able to come up with a clear diagnosis. I had lost belief in any uh, person or individual being able to have the answers for Lisa. It broke my heart because it went on for so long, years. It came to a point where, you know, Lord, a miracle is, is the only thing that, that's, that's gonna be able to, to save her from herself. My expectations of my kids were in extreme. My expectations of my ex-husband were in extreme. And I was just in extreme. She looked to the future with fear. And she never could connect with people. I just needed help. I needed help. She just wanted to go somewhere else. And so it was her decision to go to the crisis shelter. When I came to the crisis shelter, it was probably my lowest point. It all came to a head when she lost her job. They repossessed her car, and she had to move out of her apartment. And that was hard, dropping my sister off at an emergency shelter, knowing, you know, I have a home, and I have room in my home, and I would like to have her in my home but no one, I can't help her. And the people there were so kind to her that she didn't want to leave there. But they only allow you to be there for a couple months. And then you have to make a choice to do something. And so they talked to the people at Ogden Hall to see if there would be an opening. And there was. And so when we drove up and we were in front of the building there and she had her appointment about coming there, she was trembling. I said to her after we were done praying, I said, you don't have to like this, Lisa, but can you trust God in it? She got out of the car and went in. And I sat there praying and emotional. I just thank God that they accepted her and that this was a new beginning for her. It was the care and discipleship and encouragement, everything that she got at Ogden Hall that I think really put all the pieces together for her. Just that everyday encouragement that you get every single day from people around your staff. I mean, you don't get that in the real world. My brother actually went to see her at Anna Ogden and he came home and he told me that I really should go see her and that she was totally different. It was almost like closing a door on her and she looked one way and then opening up again was a completely different person. Seeing her, completely different, completely changed from the inside and on the outside. 
totally different. I couldn't believe my eyes. I, I didn't know who she was. I had to re, I had to relearn who my mom was. I know that Ogden Hall played a big part of that because it gave me a time to um, heal and to really look at me. After she went in to Ogden, I had hope again. But she says, Mom, but I have to be in here for a year and a half to two years in this program. That's a long time. She goes, and I need a job. <laughs> and I said, well, they're going to help you with that, Lisa. I got the job at Cyrus O'Leary's through the vocational program at Ann Ogden Hall. They place different women in different locations so that they can get back into the work world. It's really been neat over the last uh, year watching uh, Lisa develop as an employee and a person here. Um, I've watched her gain belief in herself. She's come out of her shell, you could say, and just blossomed into this loving, kind person. Her countenance is transformed. You look at her eyes, her eyes are alive. She smiles a lot now. And uh, she's got a great laugh. Now, I love spending time with my mom. I love talking to her and we laugh all the time and just go shopping and just stuff we'd never done before. And now she, she is the mom that I never had before. <laughs> to actually just look across the court and see your mom there watching you play and rooting you on. I see the joy on her face just watching me play and it's been incredible just to have her there to support me. It's great just to be with her and just to watch movies and you know play games and just be with each other now. Seeing how God has completely turned her life around it makes me love her more, it makes me love God more and just thanking him for giving my mom back. Seeing the miracle that took place in her life uh, has convinced me that there's hope for everybody. It's never too late or it's never impossible. Believing when there's no hope. God does still work miracles and my mom is living proof of that. It was like I wasn't there and now I'm, now I'm here. <laughs>